Hello and a very warm welcome back to the garden and this video is a crash course on how to build, fill and plant your first ever raised bed. So a raised bed is simply a growing area that is raised off the ground and this is brilliant because you might have ground that is unsuitable so you might be worried about pipes underneath or lots of stones and in fact this garden used to be a lot of sheds so the ground underneath is stone and concrete. So having raised beds means that we can bypass that issue and instead of worrying about the soil underneath we can build layers of growing space on top for all of the roots and I've actually done a whole video about the benefits of raised beds so if you want to find out more about that but the main thing you need to know if you're just starting out growing is that raised beds make things easy for you because it's a set designated size and I'll come on to size a bit later on. Having a growing space being a set size just makes it much easier for you to plan out how many Many things you need to grow because you know what the restrictions are. The first thing you need to consider when building your first raised bed is its location and as you can tell it's an absolutely beautiful day here in Wales and the important thing is to try and situate a raised bed in a sunny position because that's just going to give you more choice with what to grow. Now just to keep things simple if you do have a shady place the best things to grow there are just leafy greens like your lettuce or your kale but apart from leafy greens, other vegetables prefer to have a nice bit of sun. And you want to aim for your raised bed to be in a place that gets at least five or six hours of sunlight a day, preferably more. Once you've found a nice sunny spot for your raised bed, you now need to think about how big is a raised bed going to be. Now my favourite size for raised beds are four by ten foot. So it's 1.2 metres wide, three metres long. And I think this is just right because in terms of width, I can reach into the middle. If it is any wider, I might have to step on top of the raised bed to reach the centre. In terms of length for your raised beds, you don't want them to be too long like these raised beds here because you will be tempted to jump over the raised bed rather than go around. So I think four foot wide by 10 foot long is just a really nice size. Now this might actually be too big for your garden. So what next? I really like the four by four foot size raised beds. Those work really well. It's really fun, but you can even take them down as long as they don't get wider than four foot. You can really play around. You can have raised beds that are maybe two foot wide and three foot long. It's totally up to you. But the best thing is to try and build as raised bed as close to four by 10 foot as possible in your space, because that's going to give you a lot more potential when it comes to growing more food. You now have a nice sunny spot in the garden to build a raised bed and you also know the size of raised beds you want to build. The next thing is what to build a raised bed out of. So the previous raised bed that I was just sitting on was actually built out of 100% recycled plastic. This is non-leaching plastic that can last for decades but it is quite expensive. So if you're on a budget, here are a few alternatives that work really well. The first one here, the pallet collars. These you can either source for free if you're lucky or you can buy them really cheaply from builders merchants and these last and work so well they basically come as an instant raised bed that you just pull out and go straight into the next thing you might want to do is if you've got lots of logs lying about even breeze blocks for example you can do this as well just stack them around and fill the inside with soil now this raised bed isn't very deep in terms of soil depth and that's because I'm just going to grow shallower rooting things, for example salads. But size for your raised beds, you need to think about height. The higher the better, but the optimum will be perhaps 25 centimetres to 30 centimetres. So 10 to 12 inches will give you the biggest range of what you can grow. But it's okay to have them shorter than that. This bed is another kind of pallet bed, but instead of being a pallet collar, it's made out of pallet planks and it was very easy to make. I actually just took apart a pallet, repurposed the nails, put it together and it's a great example of how you can grow food for free. And what I love about this is that it's just repurposing waste material. I picked up three pallets for free from a local sports club that were just lying about. I asked, could I take them? They said, yes, of course. And I built a really strong, actually, this is really sturdy, raised bed and also a compost bin from that. 
So it's just an example of what's around. So you've just got to think about what materials you could use. Wood is great. You just want to make sure that it hasn't been treated before because you don't want chemicals to go in. But also using things like logs, like stone, just be creative. As long as you can create a box or a rectangle that can hold material, you're sorted. Once you've decided on and sourced a material, you now need to assemble it. And these are a load of new raised beds that we've built here. And sometimes it can be as simple as just getting the corners with maybe a bracket or even screen in from the side, that simple. Or you can just be a bit more technical. Now, in terms of actually building it, I have two different videos on how to build raised beds. I've got a video on how to build that pallet bed out of planks, and I've also got a video on how to build a raised bed using those plastic boards, but you can apply that just to wooden boards, just like these. So to save you having to watch it on this video, there's gonna be a link down below to those two different videos for you to see in more detail how to assemble a raised bed. You've now got the materials, you've built the bed, and the next stage is filling the bed. And this can seem quite difficult because it's a big space that requires a lot of material to fill it up. But fortunately, there are lots of different ways that you can fill a raised bed. Now, the standard method is just to use soil and compost. So if you have plenty of soil and compost, you can do this. This is where you do a 50-50. So the bottom 50% is gonna be soil. The top 50% is gonna be compost. Mix it in and then start planting. Now you can get away with the bottom 80, 90% being soil and the top 10, 20% being compost and just forking it in that first half but it's totally up to you. But if you've just built a 10 by four foot raised bed, it can seem a bit overwhelming trying to fill it. So there are a few alternatives. My favorite is Hugelkulter. This is a fantastic way because you're utilizing spare resources, which would otherwise go to the compost bin or go to waste. So what you do is you've got a raised bed, then at the base you add a load of harder material. This is usually logs and twigs for the bottom third. The middle third is going to be things like grass clippings and wood chip and just pack it in really tightly. And then the top third will be maybe a 50-50 mix of topsoil and compost. So that means the bottom two thirds are using more kind of waste materials rather than having to fill it all with soil and compost. If you want to find out more about Hugo Coulter, then check out this video. There is another way though of filling raised beds and this is more over the long term and this is treating a raised bed as if it's a flat compost bin. So put on all of your compost materials and just keep on building up until it's packed full and then turn it perhaps once a month. And then over maybe six to nine months, this is gonna turn very close to compost. It's gonna be coarse compost that you can then plant into. This is more long-term, but it's a great solution if you don't have access to things like soil and compost at the moment. So you've built your raised bed, you've filled it with material, and now it's time for the fun to begin. And that that is by thinking and deciding about what you want to grow and then growing it. Now, if this is your first raised bed and you've never grown food before, it can be a bit difficult because you've got to learn a few things like frost hardiness of vegetables. Now, these are broad beans and onions. I've got some spare onions left over. I'm gonna be planting them in here. And the reason why I'm planting them now is because even though we might have some more frost, these are quite hardy and they will survive a frost. But there are some vegetables which aren't going to survive a frost. For example, your dwarf French beans or your runner beans. So just do a bit of research to see when you can grow them in your area. It's not gonna take long. All you need to do is decide on a few things that you'd like to grow. The next thing is about keeping it simple. There's no point having a raised bed and filling it with 10 different things because you're only going to get very little of everything. If you actually want to grow stuff that's going to make a difference to your meals and how much food you want to be eating, and especially if you're wanting to go towards self-sufficiency, then the important thing is to perhaps say, if it's a four by four foot raised bed, like this almost is, is to just grow two or three things at most, or perhaps bulk plant it, bulk plant it with onions, bulk plant it with salads. Now, if you only have space for one raised bed, I'd recommend that you totally go 
for just growing salads because these are going to make the biggest difference in terms of small scale productivity. Things like your lettuce, your spinach, anything cut and come again, mustard greens, these make a huge difference because they keep on providing week after week for many months and salad leaves are actually really expensive in supermarkets and to have something green, delicious and healthy available for you to eat and enjoy is quite amazing. And in here, as I said before, I'm going the broad beans because I absolutely love broad beans and these are ready for planting out. So just have a little think about what you want to grow and why you want to grow it. Get it all together and get planting and enjoy it. Once you've built, filled and planted up your raised bed, what you've got to do first is just congratulate yourself and just remember that the hard work is done. The only thing you've now got to do is just worry about quite simple maintenance. The first thing is just to keep down on weeds. If you see a weed, take it out there and then rather than letting it grow too big. The other thing that you want to do is make sure it's watered. So for example, on really hot, beautiful days like this, you want to water seedlings at least every other day. Um, if you can, perhaps once a day, just water them quite deeply early on in the morning. So between eight, nine in the morning. This is just because the sun isn't going to be so strong. So a lot more water will seep into the soil rather than being evaporated on the surface. So that's gonna save you a lot of effort in the long term. Then if it's overcast once every three days, and of course, if it rains, then leave a bit of a gap. Something that you can do actually is use your finger and just go in and about an inch and 2.5 centimeters. And if it feels bone dry, it definitely needs the water. But if you can still feel moisture, you shouldn't worry and you could maybe do it the next day. There are as well some other resources down below in the video description. But if you want to find out some more tips on how to make your first raised bed a success, then check out this video here. And there's also gonna be the video about the benefits of raised beds, which you can watch as well. So thank you very much. And I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.